Hey fans, so we are going to be looking at today the uh, brand new Sacramento Northern DLC that was recently released um, from G Tracks. I will be going over basically um, the mods that I've made to the Interurban MU that comes with the, uh, the DLC and uh, also going over the operating principles of this type of equipment because that stuff is not really detailed in the um, uh, manual. Alright, so here we are in the cab. Um, I'm going to set up running direction. Uh, headlights on. Good. So, a couple things to note. Um, I was basically the changes that I did make to this uh, rolling stock is that I obviously I adjusted the performance physics so uh, changed the top speed changed the tractive effort curve um, the things that I wa wasn't able to really fix obviously because most of that is scripting is the brake setup um, you'll notice that the brakes are set up in the game to be automatic lap uh, like the farther you pull back, stronger the brake. Um, in real life, I don't think it's it's set up like that. I think it's a manual lap brake, the release, hold, service positions. So uh, why don't we charge the train up? Yeah. So uh, another thing is that. Uh, they're really I haven't really looked into a way to um, see if I can get rid of the brake squeal sound even when the train is stopped because really not supposed to be doing that um, that's minor so the way the controls are set up uh, for the throttle is that this train in real life anyway is it's a camshaft resistance controller that you're looking at on the uh, left the, to the left of the brake um, the, this controller in the game anyway has uh, seven points of power so let me put this in neutral so this doesn't go anywhere now in real life what you're supposed to do with this type of controller is that uh, because you have seven points of power the way it would be divided up is that the first four points would be uh, series points where your your electrical circuit would be hooked up in in series uh, where you're running the power through the resistors and then through each motor um, and then the the last four points points four to seven would be parallel points where you would have the uh, resistors hooked up to the uh, motors in parallel so the way you you would be trained to operate on these would be that you would have to progress through each of the power points um, uh, you wouldn't, you would not be able to wrap up the controller right away if you're starting up from a st from a standstill. You would have to progress through each power point uh, until you got to at least full series, and then uh, once you're in full series, which in this is notch four or uh, fifty-seven percent, I believe, uh, then you could hold that for about four or five seconds and then wrap it straight up to parallel. That's how the operation of this would work. So just to demonstrate. So now I'm in full series. Um, once you hold this here for about five seconds, you wrap it up to parallel. Now, if you wanted to uh, decrease your, your uh, throttle setting, you would you could you cannot on these types of controllers back off the throttle you cannot go from notch 7 to notch 6 or from notch 4 to notch 3 what you have to do is you have to shut all the way off and then notch back up to the desired notch so say I'm in full parallel now I want to go back to full series I have to shut off first then notch back up to full series Additionally, um, you should keep in mind that because this is a resistance controller, 
you need to remember which points of power are resistance points. So 57% or notch 4 is full series and 100% or full um, notch 7 is full parallel. Then every other point is a resi uh, resistance point. That means that you cannot have the controller in any point that is that is a resistance point for for a prolonged period of time. Otherwise, you risk out running too much current through the resistors and overheating the resistors, which could cause uh, resistor fires. So for low speed yard moves or switching moves, what you would do is you would use the first point or two points uh, and you would basically notch up to point one or point two, then turn it off. Then notch back up to point one and turn it off to, to maintain coasting speed. By doing this, you're limiting the amount of current that is running through the resistor grids. Uh, therefore, you would prevent yourself from overheating the uh, resistors. All right, now that we have the control elements out of the way, um, I'm going to demonstrate the uh, physics modifications. Basically, um, the, the default settings are really weird. Um, you had the motor cars starting off with some ridiculously high level of tractive effort. They were flying out of stations and stuff. So what I did was I, I modified the uh, starting tractive effort for the motor car to 50 kilonewtons, which is about 11,240 pounds of tractive effort. And it holds that um, starting tractive effort to about 18 and a half miles an hour, at which point the motors reach um, your rated horsepower which is uh, 560 per motor car. Uh, each motor is rated at 140 horsepower at 750 volts DC from the overhead wire. Um, once you reach 18.5 miles an hour, you, you basically just follow the, the constant power tractive effort curve um, up to whatever balancing speed is, which uh, is uh, dependent on the amount of motors uh, to trailers, the motor trailer ratio in your consist. Obviously, the more trailers you have in the consist, uh, the slower your train will accelerate. Um, if you have uh, j uh, just purely motors in your consist, the train will start off at 2.5 miles an hour per second acceleration. If you have, say, like a 2 to 3 or a, a 2 to 1 motor trailer ratio or, or I should say what I should say is if you have one motor for every two trailers then you'll start off closer to one mile per hour per second uh, which is which is basically what you would have started off in in typical interurban operations back in the day so uh, right now we're operating an 18 car train obviously because I'm trying to take up the full uh, 12 uh, 100 1080 foot platform uh, 12 85 foot cars on the uh, northeast corridor so we're running with I think it's 12 motors and six trailers so let's see how, uh, how fast we can get this thing up to Obviously, uh, some things to just note in the game, um, it, the game is not going to penalize you for progressively backing off the throttle. Um, it's also not going to penalize you for wrapping it up all the way to full parallel, uh, just straight off the bat. But, uh, you know, if you care about realism, then you will follow those guidelines uh, for this train's operation. Also, just, uh, just as a note in real life, um, 
if you do try to progressively shut off the throttle, like if you try to move from full parallel to full series uh, without shutting off first, the train will remain in full parallel. Uh, so it really doesn't do anything for you to progressively shut off. Obviously, once again, like in the game, it, it's not gonna, it's going to progressively shut off for you. But just as a note of realism, you really should shut off first and then bring it back to the desired point of power. As you might have noticed, uh, my alerter is going off, but for the sake of this demonstration, I've deactivated the audio on the alerter because I don't really don't want it to be dinging me every time it goes off because, you know, you know that's just the way the Northeast Corridor cab signaling works and the cab signaling works on this, this equipment. Uh, it's obviously not compatible. The highest aspect you can get in the cab signal when it's active is 35, so, you know, it's sort of... Does it make sense to leave it uh, ringing? But yeah, you will notice that uh, this equipment does not have a speedometer um, on the equipment. So if you really wanted to like try operating as a pro, you turn off the the heads up display and try to see if you could operate just based on feel alone. I mean, that's how they used to do it back in the day, before you had speedometers, so... You actually took skill to, to run a train. Everything is automated now. It's, I mean, you still need skill to do it, but a, a lot of information is given to you, whereas back in the day, you really had to feel the equipment. Oh, uh, just a note, I also did adjust the braking slightly, uh, the brake force, so it is it is down. Um, you will get about 2.5 miles per hour. You will get about 2.5 miles an hour a second uh, full service deceleration at 42 to 45%. Alright, so there you have it. It's full service stop. Uh, see how far I overran, actually. Not too bad. All 
Alright, so that basically concludes uh, what I wanted to demonstrate for this mod pack. I'm going to continue running up towards New Brunswick and Edison just for uh, visual stuff. But uh, at any rate, um, just, just keep in mind that when you download the mod, it also includes a package for the steeple cab. Um, I'm not going to make a separate video for the steeple cab mod because uh, it's, it's included with this package. But uh, just remember, as always, uh, read the both the DLC manual and my mod pack manual uh, for more information. Um, thanks for watching, uh, and uh, I hope to see you very soon with much more content. Until next time, see ya!